Okay, so the next part for this application was to add a contact landlord page. Remember that I continued uh, from here. So we have cons, user, so, uh, current selector, and we have use selector, and then we have this state, and we have state dot, okay, state dot user only. So it's only user, uh, state dot user, like that. Okay, and then we have uh, this, uh, you know, const, it's there, we have current user, and we could go all the way down and you could see over here current user and listing that user ref and then current user dot underscore id not equal to this and then it should have worked okay let's look at what the issue is arising now so it says over here that the uh, router so it says over here uncont reference contact is not defined contact okay so you might be asking like which contact well there's actually a uh, a state here uh which is this one at contact so so this well, I'll tell you what this actually means. It's actually a state, and uh, um, you know, it's actually a state. So we could have the contact state defined here. Okay. So we have con uh, const const contact contact set contact and we have use state and then we have uh, that two false okay so uh, you know this contact state is false and you could see you know well I, I shouldn't be able to view this contact button at all so let's go down and see what's the issue if i look at the current user which is right here this should be destructured so it should be destructured this is a very uh common mistake that people make so it should be destructured like this and then you would never be able to see it okay so now let's go on the bottom and let's just finish this up. So, you know, contact landlord, I can't see it, so I'm not even able to do it. So it's best to have this uh, created in a different browser account or something like that. So let's just create it here, let's suppose, in a local like this. Okay, so now you can see that um, I'm actually not even signed in, so I'm not even authorized to see it. I have to sign in to this. Um, so let's go and sign in with another account. Let's go here. And let's just sign in with my Google account, this one. Okay. So you can see over here, I have to sign in first. So let's sign in. I'll sign in with, uh, continue with Google. So let's just log into this app. And then once I'm logged in, you can see now this is my cool nav bar here. This is my profile. It created everything for me. I don't have any listings at the moment, but if I look at, the uh listing that you know i was visiting that other person's listing this is the listing you can see i could see it and i could also contact the landlord that's amazing it's actually the coding cleverly who created this so we could actually you know the coding cleverly account uh, so now what we could do is here on this button we have um we have an on click and this would uh trigger something and you know, I, it would basically be a callback function to set contact uh, true, okay? And once you click on it, you won't be able to see it. So this button needs some styling, right? It needs some styling, so styling. So it's a uh, class name, and let's have some styling to it. So first of all, we have a BG uh, green, uh, BG slate, and we have uh, 700 then we have text hyphen uh, white and we have rounded uh, lg we also have an uppercase uh, text so you can just see some of the changes going on now that, like that and you could have them um, so you could have a padding of three just to make it look better bigger okay now you could have some opacity so, so, uh, so we're gonna have hover, 
and we have op opacity and 95 you could just say so 95 and just click on this and it says opacity hyphen 95 and that's all um we now could go and on the bottom you can see contact landlord and um here we have contact now this is actually uh, the state, which is contact, you know, what, if the state is triggered, you want to open up a contact, uh, a component that we're going to be creating right here. And it's going to be passing the listing as a prop and we're going to have, uh, nothing else. So just at the moment, let me just fix this up because obviously that doesn't exist. Um, contact and it says over here, uh, okay. First of all, it doesn't have this closing. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so. If I click on contact, it's going to explode and it's just going to, you know, not work. So the reason why it's not working is that the contact is not defined. So we're going to have to create a component here. So, um, creating a con contact component is super easy. All we got to go is to the components over here. You see, this is all there, a uh, client source components here. We're going to create a contact JSX. So contact JSX. So that once we have the contact.jsx, we could simply have raft C and just have a text saying contact here, um, add it to the app.jsx. So, you know, all this other stuff is all straightforward. So we just go to the app.jsx and add the contact. I mean, it shouldn't even be in this because it's not even a page. So it should, you know, work now. So let's see, contact landlord. Okay. Okay, one minute. So um, this component is there. And we just have to pass the prop. So let's go here. Contact has to be imported here. So uh, enter. Oh, man. Okay. So it's actually contact control and space. Let's just have all of this control and space. And there you go. This contact component should be imported. Now, if I click on it, you could see the contact, you know, over here, it ne components, not necessarily. I mean, components could just exist within a single page, right? And you could also have those pa components as working as completely different pages. So this is the beauty of react. So let's go here in the contact. And, you know, actually have all of this, uh, created for us. So it's actually import, uh, use effect. And then we have, uh, use state from react. We also have a link tag. So, uh, then we have import link and then we have, uh, from react router hyphen Dom. Okay. Now in the contact page, we have this prop that was passed, which is called listing. I don't, uh, you have to recall that I actually passed, passed the listing data, all of this into the contact. We're going to have to create an API that calls and gets the user's information. All right. And this should be only for authorized access. So to, you know, have the user's information, we'll put some states to have it, you know, saved one is called landlord set landlord and then we have use state null the other one is a uh, message set message and then we have use state and then we have that and then we have this is going to be the message that you want to send the uh, you know the landlord and then we have uh for the message tag we have some uh additional things that we need to consider. But first of all, uh, we'll create an API view to, uh, to view a user's uh, details, you know. So we have to go to the, uh, let's maximize it. We'll have to go to the API here. And in here we have the routes and we have the user.route.js. So in the user.route.js, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a route that goes to just getting the, uh, the information of a user. So essentially what we'll do is slash ID of a user. Okay. And 
what you will have to do first is verify token, just your authentication, make sure you're a uh, your person uh, in an account and then get the user. And then this controller should exist. So over here we have, uh, you know, get user listings. We also need to have get user. So right now this should exist. So let's go into the uh, user.controller.js. And over here, we're going to have to create another uh, function. This is just going to get simply a user. Const, I am always export const. And then we have get user, async request and response, and like that. We have a try and catch. Okay. So what's happening here is that we have uh, const user and equal to we have await user from the database find by ID and you're basically passing the request.params.id. Essentially, this ID I'm talking about, ID, params.id, all right? And you're trying to look at look for that user in the database. If that user exists, I mean, if it doesn't exist, so you always have to look at the wrong first, you know, if the failure part, just to check it out. So return next hand, error handler and 404 not found. Else, what you could do is remove the password from that and just return that. So you could just say uh, as pass and the rest you could just uh, have from user dot underscore doc. Now we have response dot status 200 dot JSON uh, response and the rest information you just get. And for the uh, error, you could just have the next uh, error. So this is our controller. So format document. And you can see that this is being worked. You know, it's it's being invoked from here. You can now call this into your contact.jsx. So in this, you know, file, you normally have to just have a use effect. So this use effect is round brackets. So like this, and then this uh, arrow, and then we have a dependency array like this. Okay. So now inside here, we have an, uh, we have uh, an asynchronous function called fetch landlord. Okay. And it would be an async asynchronous function. And uh, we'll have the try and catch in here. Okay. In the try, we're going to try to call the API. So we're going to have cause response is equal to await uh, fetch. And we're going to have the API call, which is a slash API slash user and essentially nothing else but the id okay so dollar listing and we have dot because this is actually a uh, listing prop right so we're having the user ref okay this is the only thing that we need and we'll get the information we'll have the const data uh, await response json and then if it's false we'll just uh, you know safely return or we could also just say uh, you know, you could actually put that, you know, return if the success doesn't happen and, um, set landlord to data. And then you could have catch and in here you could have console.log error. We could put the messages, but it's okay. Uh, right at the, this part, we'll have the listing dot user ref as the dependency. Uh, this means that since we're, you know, trying to trigger this whenever listing dot user ref is triggered, you'll call, you'll call this. And that's when the use effect works. And now we could just simply go into this div and have our, since I can't see it over here, but I would be able to see it in the other under, uh, yeah, over here. So right now it's still contact, but let's just fix it up and have some really nice conditional rendering here. So first of all, we'll say if the landlord uh, is there now remember set landlord to that data you'd have this landlord right and now the landlord does exist so if the landlord exists so you're going to have ampersands and then you're going to have this and then inside here you're going to put in uh your your uh information so of, of course we're going to have a div so we're going to have uh, this. I'm just saving time uh, to save time. I'm just going to add the the code and I'm going to explain it. 
So over here you can see that uh, if I gonna have the format document, format document, come on, format document. Okay. So the thing is, we have return and we have this div, and it says if the landlord exists. Somehow it will exist because uh, you know it's being populated and it's fetching the results. You'll have the div class name flex flex, and in here we have a paragraph, we have a contact, and then it's gonna get the landlord's username, and it's also gonna have a for uh, listing dot name and two lowercase. And this is the prop. Uh, it's asking the you know the for text area is just the message value message, and then on change uh, is gonna be a function that's gonna handle the message. Link we have um, and this is a mail too, which is activating the uh, Windows mail system and it's gonna allow us to have the landlord email as a subject um, You know the two mail and we're gonna have the subject as regarding and then space and then we're gonna have the listing dot name And then we're gonna have the body as the message that we passed in this text area And then we're gonna have the class name as this, you know all this and then we have the send message Button this is actually a link that would send the message And activate that so everything else looks good the only thing that's remaining is this on change, which is on change event. We're gonna have to uh, uh, call this function here. So we're gonna have const on change event. And this, for a particular purpose, all you gotta do is you have to handle the you know changes that's happening. And this is one of the easiest ways to do it. You could see that set message is equal to e dot target dot value. If you could, uh, if you could understand that. Um, this state we actually created just to handle the messages. So right now you can see there's nothing here because this is actually my own listing. But if I view it as a, some other account, you can see now this is another account. And if I go here, if I try to contact the landlord, okay, I actually didn't receive anything. So console, object, new one. Let's refresh it out just to see if we go to contact landlord. Okay. Let's log out and log in again. So sign, uh, sign out. Sign in. Sign in with Google. And go here. Show listings. Okay, I don't have any. So we're going to go to that URL, which is this one paste it here okay this is not the right way uh, this one you can see this listing trying to contact the landlord and I'm still not able to do it hmm there there has to be some issue Perfect. So it's probably uh, because of my maybe access. So send message. I mean, it should have all this population um, triggered. So fetch landlord. Yeah, I, I can't call this. It has to be called. Wow. We didn't invoke this fetch landlord function. So it has to be invoked here. Let's invoke it right here. So fetch landlord should be invoked here. Okay. So now let's do it one more time. Now you can see that the landlord has been fetched and you can see hires update, contact hires update for new one edition. So new one edition, lowercase, and you can say, hi, I'm interested in, uh, in um, buying this house or something like that. Send a message. It's gonna open up my default email. And over here you can see two is the person's email from is my own regarding to new one edition which is the title and then over here you can see hi i'm interested in buying this house so it's pre-filling the text which is this one amazing and this looks really good so you know that's all how it triggers and you know the functionality is working